Hey guys, um, this sermon is called Welcome to the Roller Coaster. The, hi guys, this sermon is called Welcome to the Ro Roller Coaster Ride. Um, let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're about to do, are already doing, and continue to do in our lives. Lord God, I just pray today that you'll give me the words to help somebody to know that wherever they are in their, wherever they are in their lives, whether it's a joyful time, a grieving time, or whatever time, um, you are there with them, with all they need, Father. You are there with all the resources, all the compassion all the love, all the correction that we need, Lord God. Touch every heart, every spirit, every spirit, permeate the atmosphere with your love and your grace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me, speak through me today. Oh, okay, guys. Um, hi. Um, I was, how I came up with this, how God gave me this sermon, uh, was I was on Facebook, uh, yesterday, and one post, somebody was rejoicing because they got a new job, and one post was some somebody had posted about uh, a celebrity where something tragic had happened in their life and I I began to think of um, how life can go up and down and while somebody is grieving somebody else is rejoicing and while somebody else is rejoicing Somebody else has gotten horrible news, and I, I came to the realization that it 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 goes it goes down and up for all of us at different times. Life goes up and down for all of us at different times, and it's like a roller coaster. Like I've never been on a roller coaster. But I've heard that um, they are they are fun to be on sometimes, but sometimes it's terrifying because they go up and down, and sometimes they have fancy roofs and drops and all that stuff. With while you're not even looking at it, I remember this one called the the drop zone where it takes you um, supposedly up to the top and then leaves you there and just like you just sit there for a few seconds and all of a sudden it drops down and I was thinking about life and how it does that too so, sometimes at different we will all experience the same emotions, but not at the same time and not in the same situations. We will all experience anger. We will all experience fear. We will all experience joy. We will all experience elation. We will all experience um, everything. Uh, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. But I think we get confused as into why why are is that person experiencing that and I'm not, and I think uh, comparison is a camouflage for for what we think is better about the other person, but what we don't know is. That person went through the roller coaster, but differently. Like, what I mean is, 
that person went through their up and downs, but differently. And that's why comparison is so dangerous, because if you compare yourself to another person, um, that means that um, you might you might want their joy, you might want their family, you, you might want their what you see as their life, but you don't see how hard it is. You don't see the work, you don't to see the nights they cried. And what I was thinking about the other day is that um, why want somebody else's life when your life is your life? I think that God designs a path um, specifically for you. Um, God is like an architect. He draws out the map, and it's your decisions to follow it. God doesn't make you follow his map. It's your decisions to follow it or not. And I think when we go through these these up and down seasons and we see other people going through the opposite seasons, we tend to be very um, judgy and very like, oh, I want, I want their life, I want whatever, or, or we tend to be like, oh my gosh, I don't want that. What is, what is he doing with that? Or it's, it's this why he's there. Like, and what I'm learning is that you don't know why people are where they are or whatever. You know what you see, but what you see is not everything. Usually on Facebook, people show you the highlights or they may say a bit of something about what they're going through, but you have no idea. And I think um, on this roller coaster of life that we need to remember, um, we need to remember to uh, stop judging people for where they are, either good, good or bad, and stop wanting what other people have. Because the truth is, it was not designed for us. And if you got what that other person had, had you probably couldn't handle it. So the way that, that um, when you see something on Instagram or whatever, um, pray for the person. Pray for the person. Um, if you see something negative on Instagram, whether it be true or not, um, pray for that person, even if that person is not a believer. And even if the situation is totally fake, just pray that God give you the fortitude to handle that situation. And if the situation is good, Rejoice for that person because it may be your blessing by rejoicing for that person may be around the corner. See, the thing, the thing about it is we can't see what's around the corner. Um, and if you rejoice for one person in one season, even though they supposedly have what you want, you might get that same thing or something better in another season. And last week I talked about living in better and how better is not something you have. Better is not a destination, but better is something you live in. And, I, and and when you get to that um, added mindset of, I'm not looking
hoping for better. I'm not hoping for better. Better is something I'm living in now. It eventually comes to pass. I totally believe that. And I think that we need to learn to rejoice with those who rejoice. We need to learn as a people to grieve with those who grieve. We need to learn to empathize with people. I think we're, we're just too busy to, instead of looking at that neighbor's post on Instagram and saying, oh, what a perfect family. Why don't you invite that person over uh, to really get to know them? Or let them give you um, not not um, let them give you some tips on how they they work their family. If you guys have that kind of relationship, instead of being jealous about how they how they do it, get them get them to teach you. And if and if you don't want to do that, just just be happy for them, celebrate with them. Because if you celebrate with them, even if they don't celebrate with you, it will change your attitude. It will change the way you look at things. So if you can just start looking at things, living in better, and... Uh, understand that life is a roller coaster for everybody so if you're on the mountaintop now um pretty soon at some point you'll be in the valley and if you're in the valley now pretty soon at some point you'll be in, on the mountaintop uh, and the roller coaster doesn't stop until life is over and the Lord says um, take lessons from the roller coaster so just for every circumstance good or bad no good no no circumstances bad like good or challenging or take the lessons from that good or challenging circumstance because every circumstance provides you lessons if you just look um uh right now for me i try to uh say all the time what is this circumstance trying to teach me what tools can I put in my toolbox from this circumstance and if you if you look at life that way you'll be surprised on what you gain and sometimes the tools you need help to decipher them because sometimes you take the wrong tools from a circumstance and leave the right tools. So, um, okay. So let's say you had a bad relationship, and you and you took the tools of I can't trust any man or woman, and you didn't take the tool tools that um, make I need. I need to be more flexible and stop being so stringent or I need to take a closer inventory of who I let into my life instead of I can't trust anybody and instead of saying that say I need to take a closer inventory of who I let in my life. See, I think there are tools and lessons to everything in life. And I think the key to life 
is taking, is gathering, separating the, um, the tools and lessons from the garbage you leave behind. Because I think in every situation, good and bad, there are stuff you need to have to leave behind, and there are tools and lessons that you need to take with you. And sometimes we, we leave the tools and the lessons and take the bad stuff. So we leave the, I need to take a closer inventory of who I met in my life, or... Uh, pray more about who, who this person is, and we take, we, we leave that, and we take the, oh, I can't trust anybody, or we say, this always happens to me, and we don't, we don't, um, generally, um, we don't seem to kind of di differentiate different situations. We think that it's all one and it's all about us. But what is God trying to teach you about each of those relationships? Like, out of every relationship that God has brought into my life and taken away from my life, I've learned something really valuable. And I'm learning that it's not that I'm defective or whatever. It's just that the timing or whatever God has purposed in my life, he's, he needed that person to be a mailman and drop something off that I would need, but he didn't need them to stay. And it's not about me or it's not about them. It's just about what he needed, the tools he needed to bring in my life, and the lessons he needed to teach me through that person. All, even hurt is a, is a lesson in tools uh, that you can take, uh, um, that you can use positively throughout your life. And don't let her destroy you or define you. Let it strengthen and build you up. Don't let her destroy you or define you. Let it strengthen and build you up. Because that's what her can do. Her can, her can destroy you and divide you. Or her can build you up. And the Lord say, let your hurt, let your pain, let your disappointment build you up on this roller coaster. Don't let it just go round and round and round without taking any lessons. He's like, take the lessons, take the tools from the hurt and sort out the lessons from the tools and no sort of the lessons and the tools from the garbage you need to leave behind. Um, some some of us take the the uh, garbage and leave the lessons and tools as I said before. And he said, with every experience, positive or negative, there are lessons that you, that you need to learn. There are tools that he's trying to give you to operate in your future, in what he has for you in the future. So in every situation, you need to ask, well, Lord, what do I take from this? What are the lessons and, tool, and tools that you're going to put in my toolbox and what are the lessons I need to learn on this roller coaster? And remember to celebrate with people that are celebrating. And remember to uh, grieve with people who are grieving. And instead of 
wanting to like get them to teach you the tools that they learned. If they're good at saving money and they got a house that that you say, Wow, how did they get that house? Maybe you can get the tools of how they worked or different savings things that they used to get that house. And remember, with everything that you see that is positive, there's work in that you don't see. So you could see them with a big with big house and beautiful kids and a beautiful family and they're they're posting on Instagram pictures of you know, them on the beach and them on vacation and whatever and you're like, Oh man, I I wish that could be me. What you don't know is that marriage is falling apart and the kids are acting crazy. Uh, their kids are failing out of school and just acting really nuts. But what you see is not the truth. And one, one more thing that the Lord wants me to say is start, start, start telling the truth about your roller coaster ride. Start telling the truth about your roller coaster ride. Start telling the truth about your roller coaster ride. What I mean by that is we we as as people tend to live a life of intentional and unintentional lies. Like intentional lies mean that we just intentionally don't tell the truth. But unintentional lies is that we don't say anything about our lives, but we know what we pro- but what we project is not the truth. So tell the truth about how hard it is to be a mom. Tell the truth about how how tired you feel, you know, how the kids are driving you crazy and how your husband is getting on your nerves so whatever, or tell the truth about what it's like to have a disability, tell the truth about your loneliness, tell, be transparent, stop hiding, and you don't have to tell the truth to everyone, but you do need someone to tell the truth, you to, you need to stop hiding, because we're all going through this roller coaster ride, Everyone you see is dealing with something, myself included, and you just need to stop hiding. You don't need to tell everyone everything, um, but you need to tell uh, somebody something. And you get the opposite person too. You get the opposite person that overshares. They share every part of their life with everybody and they don't keep anything private that's dangerous too because if you don't keep every anything private you're just exposed and you're exposed to pain and you're exposed to heartache so you don't have to share everything on facebook facebook is not a garbage can Facebook is something to share with your family and friends, things that need to be shared. And sometimes the things that you share, God is working with you on. He's working with you in the dark on. Or I should say, he wants to work with you on it, but you've shared it. You've let everyone in on it. And when you when you let people in on something too quickly, it can can kill that thing that God is trying to do in you. So don't overshare, but share with somebody. Uh, So guys, remember,
number two, rejoice with people and agree with people. And don't be envious or compare yourself to people because uh, they walk their road, the magnificence of their road. But in your road, there is magnificence too. So celebrate your magnificence. Work on yourself. Work on the purpose that he's put in you. And you'll see the greatness that's inside you and the greatness that will come out of your life. And you don't need to be anyone else. You just need to be a greater representation of him through yourself. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Bye. This brother comes to ride on it. Let's you up and let you down. This brother comes to ride on it. Spend you around and around and around. Heaven knows wherever you go. I will be right by your side on this roller coaster, roller coaster ride. Oh roller coaster ride. Oh on this roller coaster ride of life. Let's heal up and let you down. This roller coaster ride oh no. Spin you round and around and around. Heaven knows wherever you go. I will be right by your side. On this roller coaster, roller coaster ride. The Lord wants me to tell you, you're not alone at this roller coaster. Whatever, whatever stage you, you're at, He is there for you, with you. You're not in the fire alone. He's there with wisdom. He's there with strength. He's there with hope. He's there with forgiveness. He's there with grace, and he's there with love, and he's in, he's right there with you, you're not alone. It may be twisting and turning, and you may feel like you're suspended in the air and about to drop in a minute, but he won't let you fall. You may drop, but you won't fall. You may go down for a minute, but he'll be right there to catch you. Thank you.